So in class, we're covering wave functions. And I wanted to do a little summary for you so you know what the heck is going on. First of all, de Broglie tells us that anything, but we're concerned about an electron, an electron is both a particle and a wave at the same time. And really in this section, we're considering the wave function of a particle. So I just drew some random wave here for an electron. And the function of a wave function we call psi. So in math you often call it f of x or g of x. We use the variable psi here to denote wave functions. So we consider two scenarios in lecture, or we will. The 2D and the 3D scenario. Let's look at 2D first. We also call this a particle in a box. So if an electron is confined to a flat area, totally flat area, this is the function that will describe that wave function. Okay, psi of x, just a function, is the square root of 2 over l sine n pi x over l. And here in black I drew an example function where n equals 3. Uh, you might have some wave function like this. You have a y-axis and an x-axis. This line is drawn just for fun to make it look like a box, so we can call it particle in a box. And it's psi versus x. x goes from 0 to l. l is the length of the box. And we'll have things like nodes here. You see there's two places it crosses the axis on the inside. So we call those internal nodes. And n equals 3 in this case. And you'll always notice that the number of nodes, 2 here, is always 1 less than the value of n. That's always going to be true. So that's a 2D case. We're not going to do too much with it, except for you identifying nodes, determining what n would be. Now, Let's look at a three-dimensional case here. In three dimensions, we have x, y, and z. So it gets a little more complicated. And these are called the Cartesian coordinates. Sometimes we use the spherical polar coordinates, which you may have seen in an advanced algebra class. r, distance from the origin. Theta, distance along uh, the plane, or uh, angle along the plane. And then phi, angle going uh, kind of outside of the plane. So it turns out that mathematically the r part of this function can be factored away from the angular part of this function. And you can have to make two new functions. <laughs> we have the r, or what's called the radial part of the wave function, and then the y, which is called the angular part of the wave function, because that's where the angles sit. If you want to see uh, what some of these functions look like, take a look in your reader or your textbook or online and you'll easily find that. Now, if you look at those functions, you'll see it's pretty complicated. Some of them, there's a lot of sines, a lot of cosines, um, things e raised to certain powers, etc. So that makes it really complicated to draw out these wave functions or what we'll end up calling orbitals. So how can we make drawing orbitals a little easier? Well, the answer comes in what we call quantum numbers. Hashtag. And there's four quantum numbers. N, L, M sub L, and uh, ultimately you'll learn M sub S as well. These are significant because once you know the quantum numbers, you can easily draw the function. Because N tells you about the size, how big it is. The bigger n is, the bigger the size. And also the bigger n is, the larger n is, the, the larger the energy. L, once you know the value of L, you know the shape. So for example, if L equals zero, which corresponds with the variable, or the letter S, it's a spherical shape. If L is one, corresponding to the letter P, you get a two-leaf clover of sorts. And if L equals the value 2, that corresponds to the letter D, and you get a four-leaf clover uh, look. And so, uh, and then finally, M sub L tells you about the, how these are oriented in space. So, if, for example, there's a P orbital, orbital. Vertical is this function, horizontal, etc. It could be uh, oriented different ways. And then, 
Uh, finally, M sub S, uh, you'll see ultimately, has to do with, the best word I can think of is position, or if it's pointed up or down. And we'll talk about that in lecture. But the key is, in 3D is where we're going to spend our most time. Once you know the quantum numbers, you don't really have to worry about the mechanics of this function or the details of this function per se, because the quantum numbers allow you to draw the orbitals in a much easier way than if you used a very complicated function to attempt to draw these orbitals.